Hello, thanks for coming to the first session in our fall 2024 conversation series around Archeon. Thanks for making time. I know everyone's busy. Thank you, Teresa and PTC and AO office for so much logistical work setting this up. Uh, so we're going to talk about Archeon institutional profiles today and how you can use Archeon um, to promote your institution. So these slides may look familiar to some of you. All of the conversation series slides are going to be drawn from the Getting Started with Archeon slide deck. And I always promote the Archeon Getting Started slide deck because it has over 200 slides that can help you learn about Archeon and Atom um, and learning different ways you can use Atom and Archeon. So it's a really handy resource if you want ready to access public documentation that you can just DIY learn by yourself uh, about Archeon or Atom on your own. Uh, it's continuously updated, so just make sure that you're always referencing the last updated uh, if you download the slides or if you're watching a recording, um, the last updated uh, note will be on the first slide. Uh, and anytime I've done an instructional session around the slides, uh, they get uploaded to YouTube as well. So Teresa is going to put the link to the past uh, YouTube recordings in the chat as well. So I also always mention that the slide deck contains the work of many past Archeon coordinators, but it's now updated by me. And I won't do a full introduction blurb because I think I know most of you. Um, but if we haven't met, my name's Kelly, Kelly Babcock, and I've been the part-time Archeon coordinator since January, 2023. And I also work full-time as a digital initiatives librarian with the University of Toronto, uh, where I also manage a multi-repository Atom instance called Discover Archives and do lots of other IT tech stuff. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm based in Toronto or Tecoronto, which is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Huron-Wendat, and the Seneca. So we only have the lunch hour, so I'll start uh, by saying it's going to go by a little quickly. Just use the chat if you have any questions. Um, we'll start by reviewing the different uh, types of data in Archeon or entity types, and then we'll focus specifically on the institutional profile entity type. And I think I think most of you have profiles in Archeon. Can you do a thumbs up if you do not have an Archeon profile? If you do not have an Archeon profile, I see one. Who's the one? Sherry, okay. Um, so uh, most of you have profiles, uh, but for the recording, I am going to talk uh, through how you get an Archeon institutional profile through an AO membership, just so it's recorded. Uh, and then we'll do a, a very basic overview of editing institutional profiles in Atom or Archeon. And there's also a recording of how to do this from 2023. So I might run through this part a bit quickly because the goal today is to collectively discuss ideas for how you can edit your profile to include relevant and promotional material on the profile with the goal of using Archeon for your own promotion and visibility purposes to end users and researchers. So again, all of the how-to steps that's in the slide deck, they're all in section two of that slide deck that Teresa shared. So you can refer back to it if anything's unclear. Um, and then we'll use most of the session to talk through something that's a challenge for the Archeon service, service, which is that each of you have different contexts from one another. So what works for one institution may not work for another. How you want to use Archeon may be different from other folks. So we're going to try to talk through some general practical things that everyone can consider when you think about why you would use Archeon. Uh, as one of the tools in your tool belt uh, for promotion of your institution. So this is going to include a brief overview of search engine optimization um, and some points about considering SEO uh, as you're updating your profile and thinking about how you use your profile to kind of direct users to your own institutional web presence. Um, and then we're going to end with some thoughts and strategies for how you can keep your profile updated, some maintenance estimates, um, and also some discussion time. So everyone here, I think is a known AO entity. So just a reminder, keep your video and mic off until uh, the slides are done. And then we're gonna have a discussion period where you can come on video and we're gonna use a mirror board for some discussion that we'll put a link in when the time is right. Uh, so briefly documentation, I also wanna mention um, that I think most of you know, we use Atom for Archeon and all of the slides are about the Archeon context. If you're looking for more specific information about Atom itself, uh, this is the link to the official documentation. And I try to avoid replicating documentation from Access to Memory because they do a great job. So if you're wondering about more details uh, for things, just reference the Access to Memory official documentation. The slide deck is really about the Archeon context. 
there's a, a ton of Adam documentation out there. So I've done my best in the slide deck to link to other training and also uh, points that where you can access um, help from the international Adam community, like their Google group, which is a great resource um, and other YouTube playlists as well. Another logistical thing, just as we're going through the slides, we're a small group, so if you do this, it's probably fine today, but try to avoid making any uh, uh, live updates on Archeon because it is a live and publicly accessible site, so researchers could be using it right now as we're talking. So if you want to test anything um, about editing your institutional profile, you can use the public and official Adam demo site. The AO doesn't run this. Um, it's accessible uh, from Artifactual Systems, and Teresa is going to put the link to that demo site in the chat and you can log in and use the demo site if you want to experiment with anything. Please never put any test data in uh, Archeon since it is a public and live site. If you do have a scenario where you want to test something, just chat with me and we can figure it out. But for the session today, try to avoid live editing directly in Archeon just in case something goes wrong. Uh, and I think I'm probably going to skip over what is Archeon because I think you all know, but does anyone need me to explain what Archeon is? Give me a thumbs up if you need me to explain. I'm going to give it three seconds. OK, OK, I will explain it then. I, I got one thumbs up. Um, so Archeon is a database service provided by the Archives Association of Ontario. And what it does is it collects uh, institutional profiles of archives from across Ontario. So we call it the Ontario Archival Information Network. And archives institutions can also upload archival descriptions for the records that they care for. Um, and also authority records, so information about the people and organizations that they hold records for. Um, and my position as a part-time staff member of the AAO supports the uh, maintenance and uh, delivery of the Archeon service in collaboration with archival institutions who actually feed it data. So does that, any questions? You can also upload digital objects. Um, a few institutions do this, but it's basically one big resource to find information about uh, archives in Ontario and also some select institutions upload their descriptions and digital objects. I hope that brief description makes sense. Uh, here are some stats that I'm going to skip over about Archeon, but we do have 196 institutions in Archeon, and each of these archives organizations has an institutional profile. So the profile is a landing page within the database that represents each institution and all of their contact information. And these pages are public, so anyone browsing the web can access and view them immediately upon creation. And each institutional profile is also browsable and searchable in the Archeon institutional directory. And the value of the Archeon Institutional Directory is really something I'm trying to underscore for AAO members because it's a huge value to participate in and provide to researchers and users. Uh, as, you most, as all of you know, sometimes researchers need to visit multiple archives to find what they're looking for. And so this directory is really a one-stop shop for users and researchers to find different archives, either in a given location or covering a specific thematic area for them to reach out to different inst uh, institutions and get help with their research. And it's also a directory for us, right? It's it's a directory of our community so that we can connect with each other across our siloed institutions and be able to reach out to each other. So it's a really big value. And I hope any AO institutional member or any archives in Ontario uh, considers adding themselves to it. Institutional profiles in Archeon are also exported as data. So Archeon actually holds institutional contact information as data. And we can deliver this in different ways. So one of the ways is this visual map for researchers. The link to this map is on the AAO website right now. But I am going to be doing more outreach to our researcher and user communities next year in 2025. It's going to be Archeon's 25th birthday as an AAO service. It launched in 2000. And I'll be using uh, data from institutions like this map to reach out to our user communities and also reach out to our own AAO community, such as our AAO chapters, the map is actually color coded by chapter right now. Um, and beyond targeted outreach, um, it's just a really handy visualization to see where archives are across the province. So, you know, if you are in archives in Ontario and you don't have an Archeon profile, you're really missing out on the visibility within the Archeon institutional directory and also any other data that gets produced from the institutional data in Archeon, like this map. And all of these resources have been created and maintained by the AO for researchers and our community. Um, you know, for almost 25 years. So it's pretty incredible. So the institutional profile itself is a type of data in the Archeon database. So again, Archeon uses the access to memory platform, which is an archival description database that allows for multi-repository or multi-institutional setup. And Adam has three main entity types. 
So that means three types of information stored in the data. It has lots of information in the database, but the three main types of information are archival institution pages. So one page representing each uh, institution or each archives, and that's what we're discussing today. And then archives institutions can have archival descriptions, which represent the records that each archives cares for. And if you use Archeon as an AO institutional member, you don't have to add descriptions. You can stop there. You can just create the Archeon institutional profile and choose not to add descriptions. That's fine. And we'll talk about that context. And then the third main entity type is authority records, which is when creator names or subject names are added to archival descriptions, then uh, authority record or people and organization record is created that can be browsed separately from descriptions and can also be attached to an institutional profile. So because the institutional profile information is part of this database, for good database maintenance, we need to have some security and control over how the institutional data is entered so that end users who are accessing Archeon for information can browse and find the information that they need. So to get access to having an institutional profile in Archeon, the policy is that an archives first needs to have an AO membership. Once an archive signs up for an AO institutional membership, they can contact the Archeon coordinator and then they get a login for Archeon and they also set up their institutional profile. They also get free support from whoever is filling the Archeon coordinator staff role for onboarding and use of the system. And the maintenance and management of Archeon is really funded by AO institutional membership fees. There are also provincial grants, but we do need the membership fees to help sustain Archeon. Every year, the Archives of the Archives Association of Ontario uh, actually pays a hosting fee to Artifactual Systems. They're the company that maintains the Atom platform, and they actually provide hosting services for the Archeon Atom instance. So the other thing to note about the AO memberships is that they help facilitate my work in maintaining user logins with Archeon. I use the AO membership database for user validation annually to make sure that institutions have current and up-to-date logins. And so I know who to connect with per institution. There's 196 people leave jobs, staff rotate. So the Archeon policy of having an AO institutional membership really, really helps with user security and maintenance of the database for the person filling the staff role. And security is increasingly... Uh, you know, a big, bigger and bigger issue for our institution's uh, web tools. So it's important. Um, if you have not uh, used Archeon before, uh, for the one person I think who hasn't, you can obtain a login uh, after you get your membership by emailing the Archeon coordinator, and then it's all web-based. You log in through the web uh, with your login, and uh, you can edit your institutional profile. I'm not going to cover uh, how you log in, because I think everyone else here has it, but Contact me if you are setting up your institution and, and need a login and you get support for that. One thing to note, though, is uh, you do get an editor profile, which has some restrictions. And then a common issue that you should never be embarrassed of is if you forget your password, the only way to reset it is actually to email the Archeon coordinator. Uh, the reset password button that you see here is actually only accessible once you log in. So that's one of the flaws of the system. But just email anytime if you need a password reset. So here's the section of the getting started slide deck that is already recorded and is linked in the slides. So I'm not going to cover this uh, too much in detail. Uh, but what we do is we ask institutions to at least fill out the six minimum fields that are required of the Archeon institutional profile. So uh, that's the name of the archives. And that name, whenever it's created, becomes the URL, the permanent URL of your institutional profile. Then the Archeon identifier number gets added by the Archeon coordinator. This is assigned to you and, and you're not uh, intended to change it. And that's just if you have a name change, then you have an ID instead of just your name to reference you. So it helps with database control. And then there's also a type of archives field that is from a repository types taxonomy. And that can help group archives uh, according to type, obviously, which can help researchers in searching through the institutional directory. And then we ask that you fill in the full address, which obviously for the map is important. We need a valid address to, to locate you on the map. Um, and then the most important probably is the contact information of your institution. So the phone and email and website, the email and website especially are essential and have to have to be active uh, links that actually work for users who are trying to contact you. And then finally, any opening times and how to physically access your archives if you're open to the public. And then uh, there's a number seven here because I'm also suggesting that a lot of institutions now are, are 
have their own descriptive uh, databases. They're not using Archeon for its uh, description uh, capabilities. So if you're one of those institutions, uh, please use the finding aids, guides, and publications field uh, to link out to your own internal database, and that can help lead users uh, to your institution. And we'll talk about this in the SEO section, but if you want to use your institutional profile as kind of a pathway to help users connect uh, to what they need from your institution to your own web presence, you can use this field to be strategic in um, updating your profile and trying to guide users to where you want them to go. So I've linked to a really great example from the City of Ottawa archives. Uh, this is a screenshot of them. And I like their example because their profile's up to date. Um, you know, they they haven't they don't add descriptions anymore, and that's totally fine. But the profile looks great. It has a, a really lovely banner. Um, and then they're actually using uh, um, this section is a custom uh, content in their theme, their their profile theme, which we'll talk about in a moment. And they're actually guiding users to tell users what they have and how to actually access their their collections online. Uh, and then they include this information um, separately in their finding aids, guides, and publications field as well. And then they're giving an updated link. So they're kind of taking uh, Archeon access and guiding them to their own institutional page, which is great. So this next set of slides runs through updating an Archeon profile. And I keep meaning to update this recording because it's so blurry. Um, but do we want to cover the different pieces of editing your institutional profile? Who here wants to see that in a bit more detail? I'm gonna give it five seconds. Do you need to see the actual editing function or are most people comfortable knowing where to click edit and editing the information? If you want to see it, give me a thumbs up. I'll give it five seconds. Okay, good. <laughs> oh no, this one. Oh, Caitlin, okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna do it a little fast because I, I think a lot of people have, have seen this part. Um, and this is the problem with doing Archeon training because everyone's at different, um, different experience. Um, okay, so these little screen captures that are in the slide deck that you can refer back to are just showing the various information in the profile. And it's not a significant amount of information, but it's complete. So it helps researchers and public users contact the archive and learn more about them. And so all of this information is editable once you have an Archeon login. You scroll down to your institutional page after logging in and you click that little edit button, and then you're gonna be able to edit any information um, that's on the profile. So this is just showing you're scrolling down, you're clicking edit. And then what you're editing right now is the data about your institution. Um, so you can change the name. If you edit the name, you're not going to be able to update your URL. The URL of your institution, which takes from the institutional name, is not modifiable um, after it's been published. So that's something to consider when you're setting up uh, your profile. Um, yeah, so that section, again, is just the data about your institution. Um, and then I always flag that the institutional profile is actually set up to standardize your data. If you ever need to export your institutional data, it gets uh, exported as the International Council on Archives International Standard for Describing Institutions with Archival Holdings. So I can give you an XML uh, record or an, uh, a CSV with the data formatted according to that standard if you share it with other uh, archives aggregators and other Atom instances. So it's really helpful. Uh, and I link to the slides and what that standard means, and it can help you help guide you fill in the information um, when you're writing information in your profile, you can refer to the standard to enter data. Uh, so that's more about the standard. And then in this link, in this slide, there's also a link to Artifactual Systems public documentation about editing your profile, which is really helpful. Um, and I've also linked to Memory NS, uh, which is uh, one of the other provincial Atom aggregators for archives. Uh, they have some great documentation too about editing. Um, so here are the Archeon specific edits that you can make on your profile. And just remember, we're going to talk about SEO as well, but you want to make it inviting. You want to make it accurate for researchers that are using Archeon and maybe they don't even know what they're looking for. You want to give them some information uh, about your archives to lead them to the records that you want to promote to them. 
So part of doing that is keeping your profile up to date. Uh, it's important. <laughs> I always feel shamey when I say that, but it is, uh, you know, you need to, to check it um, at least annually, just in case, um, you know, something's been updated, uh, your contact information is incorrect, um, and you will need a log an active login to be able to do that. Uh, and then I always flag that the contact information, uh, many of you already know this, but the contact information is a bit hidden. You have to actually uh, go into the contact area and click this little pencil icon. And then that's where you update the URL and the email uh, for your, your profile. And then that little pencil icon opens this form where you can fill in the actual contact information. And this is important for location as well. If you change locations and you wanna update your location on the map, uh, you'll have to fill in all this information. And then once you click submit, it updates. Um, and then another thing that I haven't uh, discussed yet, maybe we can talk about it during um, the discussion portion, is uh, the locality. So these terms are not controlled. Um, you can enter any, wherever your, your physical location is, whatever your city is. Um, but just a heads up to pay attention to how other archives are describing their locality. Um, I can't think of a good example. Uh, what's, you know, sometimes town names change or there's different way of, ways of representing them. Um, so just see how other archives have described their location and try to follow what's in there because that's actually how people find uh, an archives by location in the institutional directory. And then the institution type, uh, I think, is an area where we could all kind of work together to create taxonomy terms um, that help users find similar archives. Uh, so right now, the taxonomy terms that are there are great. Um, you know, if somebody's looking for religious organizations, uh, they have 24 to choose from who've, who've chosen that taxonomy type. But these are really helpful to add to your institutional profile. Um, just to surface your organization alongside similar organizations in the institutional directory. Um, and then there's also uh, something called the thematic area, which is another controlled term list. Um, if you'd like to suggest new thematic area terms, let me know. But I also encourage people to use that as well, because that can help surface you uh, within a given thematic area for end users. Um, and then I also say right now, please don't use geographic subregions. Uh, the list isn't controlled, so it's a little confusing for end users, um, but it could also be used, for example, to apply all the AAO chapters um, to an institution to kind of collect institution by AAO chapter, which is really only useful for AAO members, but is something that we could do. We just, we can talk about that later if we want to. So the thing related to search engine optimization that I want to talk about is the customization feature in Atom and in Archeon that you can take advantage of. Um, and I've linked in the slides to all the artifactual uh, systems instructions about how to do that. And we can demo it too if questions come up during discussion. So you can add a logo, you can add a banner, um, and those things are fairly straightforward. And I'm here to help with those things. Uh, they can really assist in, in making your profile page a lot more inviting to users, um, like we saw with the city of Ottawa's beautiful banner. Um, and sometimes people have issues with uploading. So if you encounter an issue, there's no, um, just contact me and I can help. It's not, sometimes the, the image format is a little strange, um, but that's a really nice way to kind of make your profile a lot more visual and inviting. Um, and then there's also uh, instructions about changing the color, the theme of your, your profile. And I always just sort of warn um, in Ontario, we have to follow ADO, AODA uh, legislation for making our websites accessible. And this includes something called the WCAG AA contrast criteria. So you have to make sure that you're publishing colors that have enough contrast uh, for web accessibility. So changing the background color of your page could impact Archeon's AODA compliance. So just be careful if you're changing colors. Um, and in the slides I've linked later on, I've linked to how we check that. So the, the piece that is really, really where you can be looking at doing SEO and helping guide users to your own institutional web presence is the custom description on an institutional page. And I'll show you what that looks like. And the slides also link to instructions about how to edit that. So uh, the, the, sorry, the Guelph Public Library Archives is always our go-to example because they really make use of this custom block. 
Um, and they actually use Archeon for digital image hosting. So they link to the search results for digital images to kind of guide users to that. But it's a really good uh, use of specific search examples that suit Guelph Public Library archives and is specific to them and giving users that information right on their profile landing page. So all of, I don't know if you can see my cursor, uh, but all of this information here, this is all the custom content block on the Archeon uh, institutional page for Guelph that they have gone ahead and edited themselves um, to add this specific information. Um, so the artifactual documentation explains this really well. Uh, what you do is you don't click edit on your institutional profile as you, you scroll down and you click edit theme and the theme is where you modify this. Um, so I didn't recreate the documentation in the slides uh, and we can walk through it if people are curious, but just know that this custom block really gives you a lot of control uh, over your profile and what you're telling users in your Archeon presence. Um, and you can also contact me if you have specific content you wanna add to it, but you're not, a, you're, you're not sure about editing the HTML block, I'm happy to update it as well. Um, but the key <laughs> with this block is that it can actually benefit the search engine optimization of your profile. Uh, and this slide is out of order, but this uh, shows you that if you do choose to edit your um, Archeon theme colors, you can use this tool um, I, I, it's specific to Chrome, so hopefully everyone's institution allows them to use a Chrome web browser, but it's called the Chrome Wave extension, and you can just right click after you install it in Chrome and it flags any accessibility issues. So if you are using a background color that doesn't uh, work for accessibility, it'll flag it for you and you can change the color. I'm also happy to do this if you want to change the color, but you're not sure about checking the contrast. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, Archeon as a service has existed since 2000. So it's been around for a long time and it's also run on Atom since 2011, which is quite a long time for a website. So as a web presence, it actually has a really high ranking in search engines like Google and DuckDuckGo. And this means that information in Archeon can actually surface really high in search results if a user enters a term related to your archives or your holdings in a search engine. So the definition of search engine optimization or SEO that I found is that it's the practice of enhancing a website or web page to improve that website or web pages ranking on search engine results pages or SERPs. So why not think about this as we're updating our Archeon institutional pages and sort of use Archeon for our institution to surface them in search engines, in addition to being part of you know, the visual map of institutions and the Archeon directory, we can actually be using Archeon to surface ourselves in search engine results as well. So this is not a pretty visual page of search engine uh, optimization. But I just wanted to make a really quick list of things you can do when you're thinking about updating your profile that can actually enhance your ranking in search results. Um, and there's SEO for Archeon as a website, but then there's also SEO for specific pages as well. So these are specific on-page SEO elements, things you can actually edit yourself in that custom content block that we were talking about that give you control over how much your uh, your institutional profile is going to search uh, is going to surface in search engine results. So first, there's page content quality, um, and what SEO recommendations are uh, for improving SEO is that you're creating high quality, relevant, and engaging content with a focus on value to users. So you can actually be editing text in your content block that is directed to your users and using specific language um, and links to connect them with relevant resources. Um, and there's a, there's a bad, there's an opposite to that of things not to do, but that's on the next slide. Uh, and then links are really, really, really important for SEO. You can use links to uh, reference specific content in Archeon. So for example, if you're updating your profile and you're having a year long um, advocacy effort around a specific collection, uh, you can link to specific search results in Archeon to get users to those specific results. And that actually helps your SEO. And then you can also use backlinks uh, to your own institution in your custom content. And that actually helps your own institution's search engine optimization because Archeon is a reputable website, then it actually can surface your own institution's uh, website as well. So you can be using Archeon for SEO, but then using your Archeon content for SEO for your own institution's uh, website. And then 
uh, keywords. So I think traditionally we think of keywords as, as adding to our descriptions, um, but in the custom content block on your institutional profile, you can actually use meta tags uh, in your HTML and be entering keywords on your institutional page for things that you may want to surface. So if you have a specific collection of a specific person, um, I can't help it, but I work in, <laughs> I work at U of T and this is the first thing that's uh, popping into my head. But for example, the Thomas Fisher Rare Book Library, you know, they have the archives of Margaret Atwood. So maybe they want to add uh, a meta tag, uh, Margaret Atwood to their custom content block because they want that to be servicing when people are, are searching for that name in search engines. So that's an example of something you can do. And then you can also add uh, image links uh, in the, the profile as well. And we've also, um, there is a link in the YouTube recordings to the February 2024 session from Artifactual Systems as an intro to Adam. And they shared a really good example of some, an institution actually putting a, a YouTube video embed in their custom content that actually gave a really nice introduction into the archives uh, too. So that can be helpful for SEO as well. Uh, just make sure you use alt text. Um, sorry, alt tags, whenever you're adding an embed. So like an image tag, um, you wanna make sure you're adding alt tags within that HTML uh, and then use any descriptive file names if you're referencing uh, external images. And then other uh, considerations when you're updating your profile that are bad on page SEO things is if you're duplicating content. So if you're using that custom content block um, to, you know, outline your opening hours. Don't do that because the opening hours are in a different field of your actual institutional data. So you never wanna replicate uh, or duplicate content um, in the custom content field um, because that can actually dilute your ranking potential. Um, and I don't know exactly what this means, but in all the SEO documentation, um, it says don't have little or no valuable content. So I don't know how, it's a little bit of a mystery of how SEO works. Um, I don't know what no valuable content means, but I think having good quality content describing your institution and your holdings in that custom content will help. So um, the, the line is just make pages meaningful to your users as you understand they would be meaningful to your users and you know your users best. So the Archeon coordinator can help you update your institutional profile, but I think making the page meaningful is, is really um, an activity that institutions need to to take on because you know your collections and your institution. Uh, broken links are terrible for SEO. They really, really negatively impact SEO. Um, so I've I've done a lot of work in the last uh, year and a bit to update broken links where I find them. Um, and when I exported all the data to update our Archeon, our institutional map for the AO, um, I went through and just updated anywhere where a web page was sending a 404 error, so it was broken. So many have been updated, but just, you know, if you go through a website migration or um, something breaks uh, with the, the links of your page, just make sure you update it because it can really negatively impact you surfacing in search engine results. Um, and then just when we had talked about keywords, um, don't add too many because apparently SEO will kind of fuss about having too many meta tags if it looks like you're trying to overdo it. So make the keywords meaningful if you do use meta tags in your HTML. That's a lot of information, but we, you can ask questions during discussion time. Um, this, what we're talking about though is time, right? It's, it's people's hours at their job um, and you have lots of things to do. So how do you sort of justify <laughs> the time investment of updating your profile. And I would say that it's it's not, a, it doesn't have to be a lot of time to update your profile. Um, the estimate that I'm saying you could give administrators, you could give your staff if you're assigning this to somebody is like, hey, you're responsible for updating our Archeon profile at our institution. And you, know, you might spend two to 10 hours a year uh, making the updates. I really don't foresee people spending 10 hours <laughs> updating their institutional profile, but that's the high end of the estimate. Uh, it really should only be you know, maybe 30 minutes to two, two hours a year, depending on what you're adding to it. Um, it shouldn't be that time consuming. And then you have all this opportunity to benefit from search engine ranking 
high ranking higher uh, for your institutional page and also your your own institution's web presence, um, which seems like a pretty good balance of time investment for outcome. Um, but I will say that uh, you should be realistic about creating your institutional profile. If you know that there's just no staff capacity to update it, then maybe you don't want to add a custom content block that may need to be updated or links to be updated um, if you don't have the staff capacity. And that's okay, too. Um, and then you can also be kind of strategic about planning maintenance. Uh, you can make it coincide with AO timelines. So the AO is a pretty cyclical organization. Things happen at the same time every year. Uh, so the AO membership renewal period starts in about March and runs until May when the conference takes place, usually annually. Um, so you could time your institutional profile alongside your, your membership update. Um, summer can also be a really quiet period for institutions and also at the AAO. It's a little bit of a board transition time, but it is generally quiet for the Archeon service. Um, and then the AAO also has a leadership meeting uh, every fall, usually in October annually, and a lot of um, membership data update happens then to report at the leadership meeting uh, for me as Archeon coordinator. So you could time it with those those three points in the year, um, pick one, and it shouldn't be that time consuming. So yeah, that is the section on maintenance and estimates. Uh, so I want to try something. Um, these sessions are kind of arising out of having a lot of information about Archeon, but then wanting to tap our membership to discuss what you need. Uh, so we're gonna try working in a tool called Miro. Um, for the rest of the session. And it's okay if this doesn't work because we're just testing it out. Um, but you can click on the link that Teresa shared in the chat and it should take you to a page that looks like this. And everybody should, and sorry, I know it's annoying to have Zoom open and then a browser open, but just kind of have them side by side if you can. And so we're gonna try something um, that we use in other technology service uh, assessment tools called stop, start, and continue. Uh, and if you can think about these things, oh no, now we lost the little percentage, there it is. And if you can think about these words in the context of stopping, starting, or continuing to have data entry practices around your institutional profile that would be helpful for end users, um, so things like different taxonomies that we could be doing to, to sort of collect institutional information and present it to users. Um, if there's custom content blocks that we could be advising institutions to use that would help with discovery. Uh, just any ideas around stopping, starting, and uh, um, whatever that one is. <laughs> Stop, start, and continue, sorry. Uh, and then, so that's one thing to think about. Um, and then also thinking about it in the context of what can the AEO and the Archeon coordinator um, be doing to support you as an institution in updating your profile. So either stopping some type of support that we're doing, starting some type of support or continuing. Um, and I'll just leave five minutes. Uh, so at 1243, and we can come off camera and discuss anything. And if there's any questions about anything I spoke about, uh, we can put it in the discussion section. And let me quickly demo, uh, and also, sorry, Teresa's gonna stop the recording so the discussion is not recorded, um, but I may take portions of things that are mentioned here uh, for future just to discuss membership needs. Um, the way you enter these is you click on a post-it and then you start typing in text uh, and then you can leave it and it's all anon anonymous. So just feel free to say anything you need to. Um, so I'm going to have a drink of water and go off camera, and then I will be back in three minutes. Please, please fill this out, and hopefully this works, and as a discussion facilitation method, and we'll try it out. <laughs> 